Welcome to the final Chippy Chat of 2022. This is the final one. And it's getting cold out there, chaps, isn't it? And no. it, here's Lloyd. If you've not seen Lloyd yet on the channel, here is Lloyd. Lloyd is our new member. Of course, you all know Ed. Eddie uh, helped me find Lloyd, and Lloyd is now part of the team. So that was big news this yeah, year. Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest things to happen in uh, 2022 for us. But there's been a lot going on. Oh, and this, yeah. this video is kind of a recap, kind of a thanks to everyone who's helped support us and support the channel and support all of our media ventures as well. And uh, just to sum up of 2022 and what we can hope for in 2023 and what you can expect from us in the future videos. Exactly. I think it's um, key. The first thing to say is, um, you know, obviously thanks to you guys for watching our content, for engaging in our content um, and some of the amazing comments that you you send in. in. In some cases, it's as educational for me reading the comments as it is oh, for you know, yeah, us yeah, yeah. to try and put stuff out there. Um, how have you found it, Lloyd? What's been your highlight so far? You know what, doing that dormer in a day, to me, was mind-blowing um, and, you know, really eye-opening. So that was probably my favourite. Uh, there's a recent video on YouTube that you guys can see, but the, the thing that was unique to me, I've done dormers before, but where we, we um, laid all the parts out before and standardised them, um, to me, to see something go up in a day like that was, was awesome. So that was a highlight. Um, I loved all the stuff at the Gap, I'd say, with you, Ed, that you've been, we've been doing recently. Yeah, Lloyd and I were left to do the insulating on the, on the new project with the 120 between the rafters, which was, it had its own challenges and it was, it was difficult, but exciting to have the opportunity to do it on our own. Yeah. And I think we nailed it. And uh, yeah, it was been, it's been really good. I'll be the judge of that. So. <laughs> no, you did all, obviously did really well. And in, tra in fact, let's talk about Gapo Tape because that's one of those products. If we had to look back and say products and how they're evolving, I can remember when I first saw Gapo Tape about five years ago yeah. at an exhibition. I remember thinking, I won't use that. It's going to take me longer and it's going to cost me more. However, with the cost of living crisis and yeah, energy yeah. prices, actually now we need to be thinking even more about specifying the right insulation to meet regs, that's the first thing, and then improving on the installation so it actually works. Because, needless to say, when you cut a solid slab of PIR between rafters, it's really hard to make it fit perfectly, especially when you're under pressure. You've got 50 sheets of insulation to cut, mm. you've got a whole roof there and you're under pressure. So the difference that Gapo Tape has made and the success that this, the product has seen has been absolutely phenomenal. So yeah. there's a thanks that goes out again to Gapo Tape as well for uh, working with us because yeah. we had kind of like dubious thoughts about the brand a few years ago. Will it be the right thing to do? And now I put my hand on my heart oh, and say, so I wouldn't want to use anything else. And, and especially what we've been saying about being cold, it's been minus six and we've been outside. We've been working the loft. We've got no heating. We've yeah. just got insulation. And it's, and it's warm up there, you know, we're, we're happily working in a, just a jumper, nothing else. Yeah, and then all it's got it. in there is insulation, the dormers are open still, there's still air coming in, cold air, so it's, it's a testament to the product, I'd definitely say. Exactly, yeah, we've also travelled this year, we went to Germany, we twice. went... Twice. Yeah, we went yeah. twice, we went the first time we went, and this is where we actually met Lloyd, in Germany, just by chance, in, Cologne, um, yeah. in Cologne, that was for dash holes, which means roof and wood. Um, and that was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a brilliant trip. I mean, really, if you're interested really in carpentry, joinery, and roofing, beer. and beer, of course, <laughs> um, it's a worthwhile place to visit. And then we went back, um, I haven't posted this video as yet, but we went back as, um, as a tour to look at Metabo and Haikoki tools. And that was a fantastic couple of days. Lloyd obviously wasn't on the firm at that yeah. point, so Lloyd didn't get to go, but maybe hopefully next year we'll take Lloyd on one of our proper trips, which will be, Fantastic as well. So tell us about the differences of working with us as, as to what you were doing before. Yeah, I think working with two guys who they, they think about carpentry inside and outside of work has a massive difference. And um, Robin obviously has a standard of excellence and doesn't accept anything less. So I'd say, I'd say it's fair to say it was a bit of a learning curve for me the first couple of weeks. But um, hopefully you mm. guys can say that I've improved and um, I've learned a lot more. It's just a totally different way of, of doing things, you know, using the rods, mm. um, you know, making sure everything's absolutely perfect. That mm. to me is, is new, you know. And I think that, you know, um, going along the theme of the way we do things, people often say, what sort of client's gonna pay for that level mm. of work? Now we still work on a price. My customers have only got a set budget like everyone else. So that means when they ask me to go and look at a job, I have to go there and I think, how much can I deliver this for? 
I, my first thought is making sure we get the jobs yeah. and getting, getting the right type of customers. I, I think the difference is we take a lot of time insulating and, and doing things like that, but we'll put pitch a dormer in a day, like things like that. So we, we make up our time. We've, we, you've perfected yeah. techniques for doing things that you know you can do things super quick. And when it comes to roofing and constructing things, you know your techniques and you've got it nailed down and we can do it quick. But insulating, it takes a long job, you want to do it properly. That's just the way it is. It can't, you can't shortcut a proper job when it comes to insulating. So. No, and I do, I do think that the industry is changing all the time. Indeed, you know, as and when building regs change or safety, say safety regulations yeah. change, we have to adopt those changes and get used to them. And we're just in a period now of getting used to those changes. So what we may be doing with insulation is a classic case in point might seem a bit over the top to some people, or they might turn around and say, who's gonna pay for the amount of time that's taking? But unfortunately, that's the way it's gotta go. If you want it to comply, not just comply for the sake of a bit of paper, but if you actually want it to do its job. And uh, surveying is getting much more sophisticated. Mark my words, it won't be long before a mortgage affair will need to go around with a thermal imaging camera of some sort oh, yeah. and actually say, yes, this does stand up to its EPC rating, whether it's a letting or a resale. It's not just going to be done on some assumption by someone who knows roughly the type of construction, what the rating should be. Because at the moment, it's an estimated rating, the mm. EPC, mm. the Energy Performance Certificate. So what we're, adapt we're now doing is trying to, we monitor the temperature of our builds as we go. We use a small device yeah. which keeps an eye on the humidity and the temperature. And that's really useful, even when there's no heating on. Because, for example, the garden room, I've had a small device in there measuring everything. So yeah, we've got no heating in there, but that, we're yeah. airtight and the insulation's in. So I've now seen during this cold spell, we've got down to minus seven, minus eight in Surrey, and the drop inside, we've never got down to lower than plus seven from about a, a, an average of, of 12 degrees. So it's yeah, been an average incredible. of 12 degrees, and we've only dropped to, by five degrees. Yeah. And considering the outside temperature, and there's been no heating on or anything like that, it's just been able to cool down we haven't opened the doors haven't been in and out so yeah. that's quite interesting so i think next year that's going to be a fairly big change for people all building regs take a while to catch up the building inspectors indeed take a while to catch up and i think that if you're in the business of pricing work for next year so you're going to be doing domestic work loft conversions extensions i think you really want to at the pricing point pay particular attention to the building rigs because you can easily get caught out if you think the last job we did we spent three thousand on insulation the chances are, when you read the new specifications, it's not just the insulation, how much extra battening you've got to put in to get down to the right levels. So I think really my advice to you next year is watch out for that. Some of the prices are coming down, the material prices are stabilising. Timber seems to be stabilising slightly, doesn't it? It seems to be coming a lot more realistic and back to how it used to be. Absolutely, and I think there's a couple of factors there. The first factor is the fact that the supply chain is, has it been easing. Now, this is a lot to do with the cost of living crisis as well and the time of year. We build heavy in the summer. There's a lot of building work mm. going on. And also, I'm finding that the inquiries are slowing down a little bit, partly due to people worrying about what next year holds. Yeah. The interest rates rising slightly. And people are thinking, do I want to commit to a bigger loan? Do I want to do the work on the house? Shall we wait and see what happens? So... I think that's um, really fundamental. So on that point, before we move on, if you're you know, considering looking at work next year, we will have to up our games. We'll have to answer the phone a bit, mm -hmm. a bit more keenly. We'll have to be a bit more reliable if we say we're gonna go and look at a job. We make sure we go and look at the job. I know that sometimes we get a lot of inquiries, we just have to let some go by the wayside and that's just natural wastage, I appreciate that. Mm. But just be honest with people, say no, it's not for me, or yes, I'd love to come and have a look at it, and then try to win the work, just to make sure we've got some stuff going on. So Lloyd, what would you like to add to our chippy chat? Uh, well, just on finding a good employer, you know, I've been uh, fortunate enough to work with these guys. Um, and one thing I found, uh, I found out through um, interviewing with Robin is, the more time a potential employer takes learning about you and maybe interviewing you or, or getting you on site, the more chances are they're going to be better employers. So if they just want to get you in, sign health and safety forms, they might, they might just see you as like cannon fodder and getting you in, you know, will get you on the shovel. But if someone's going to say, oh, well, how are you going to get to work? Or, um, you know, what tools do you have? The more time they spend, the more they're likely to, to invest in you. So keep that in mind for apprentices that are maybe in a similar position to me. They want to learn from someone um, more skilled. 
make sure that they're investing the time in you because you are worth it if, if you're looking to learn it is worth it mm. um so do keep that in mind yeah. unfortunately it's not always going to be like that the building trade is famous famously been known as easy come easy go so you might have a start on a monday and you might have nothing on a friday and that's always been the case it's easy to hire and fire everyone seems to be self-employed so you can just say well you work for me for three days you work for them for two and that's mm. fine okay if that's the arrangement that's got to be it's got to be but what breaks my heart is when i get a message on instagram i had uh, one this week in particular from an apprentice in ireland saying that um he's on site his boss is sort of showing him a couple of times how to cut the architrave and put it up and he's and the young lad is having some trouble and yeah. the guy is saying to him you know he's He's not speaking to him very nicely and he's killing his confidence. Do you know what I mean? There's so many yeah. things why a joint yeah, might yeah. not go together. He might not be showing him the best techniques. And this poor lad is being beaten down by the fact mm. that someone's impatient. Okay, the guy might be under pressure. He needs to get the job done. Hasn't got time. I think the young lad said to me something like, um, he said, oh, we can't keep wasting material. And I oh. think, yeah, I understand that. I understand that but you've got to invest in people you've maybe got to show maybe that well they're not ready for an apprentice or they're not ready yeah, for that level exactly. of that level of training yeah i think you've got to you've got to almost value your worth and you've got to work for something don't just settle for something that you, you you're not feeling right about or it might not be you know it might not come out great for you you've got to mm. kind of value yourself a bit mm. as well you've got to think of yourself as an asset like lloyd mm. said basically i'm just echoing what lloyd said but i think it's a really valuable point as someone looking to progress and to be in the level, you've got to set your stand of what you want to be. I've had people message me constantly, uh, a few guys I've spoken to on the phone say that they want to be good, but they're working with people who are just, uh, uh, don't care, don't wear safety goggles, don't do blah, 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 whatever. You've got to set the stand of what you want to be and not worry about what anyone else says. So if you want to wear all the PPE you want and you want to go to site and you want to wear clean clothes and look good and whatever, and set a standard for yourself to work to, then set yourself a standard. If yeah. no one else is matching to it. Okay, and, and also um, I'm bound to get a comment, I get this comment a lot, well how on earth can I find a good employer? How can I find someone even to take me on and give me work experience? And that's a really common theme that I get mm. asked. And I often go back with the most practical way that I know how, okay, and it's basic networking. Sometimes you need to think outside the box. Go down to your local timber merchants and speak to the guys behind the counter and say, look, I'm a, I'm a young carpenter apprentice. I'm looking for some work experience. Do you know anyone who's rushed off their feet who might be looking for a pair of hands? Mm. I can bet you that that builder's merchant would know, or that timber merchant would know, ah, oh, it's Steve down the road. He is flat out. He's struggling to find anyone. And it's like a marriage made in heaven. Yeah, I think the modern version of that, though, is, is social media. There's so many people on social media. You can find them. You can see exactly what they do and exactly how they work just by looking at an Instagram page. So maybe that's the modern version of going to the local yeah. sales merchant, potentially. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for social media. We all use it, we all mm. love it. Indeed, we rely on it for all kinds of reasons. But I also find that social media, a lot of people groom their posts mm, to make sure so, yeah. you know they look yeah. amazing on social media. And I just think that that shouldn't ever be the focus. I don't think if you're in the market of filming something, polishing it just to post it on social media, are you really honing your craft? Do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. You know, it's kind of like, what the only way to do this is do it live to be for real. You know, we need to mm. get to the point where the internet connection is so good. If you really want to post what you're doing, stick a camera up and just work. And I think that's where I'd like to get to. I've mentioned it before, I'd mm. like to get to that. And have, just have it open. If anyone wants to dip in and dip out, I know there's a lot of risks with that, but um, it'd be quite good fun. What yeah. do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's good. If anyone's in the South London or Surrey area, I've got a few companies I've worked with that I can point people in the right direction, I'm sure mm. sure these guys do as well. So feel free to reach out. Um, but yeah, there's. I think if you use social media, you use your local builders, merchant, websites, Google reviews, if you make a list of firms and maybe rank them all on all of the information you've got, you give yourself the best chances of not um, having any, you know, any nasty surprises and um, getting the best employer possible. Yeah, so, okay, so that's a little bit about, you know, this and that, what we've done. We seem to go off on a tangent. Yeah. We haven't got a script. We, would, we wanted to do this from the heart. It is the last one of the year. And <clears throat> before we go too far, let's just say a few thank yous. So, First of all, I'd like to thank my clients mm. for A, giving us the work so we're able to make this content um, and being understanding every now and then where we sort of maybe hold up to do something because we can't do it because of a certain reason. Maybe we're waiting for some particular product that we're going to be using. I'd also like to thank the product manufacturers. 
that we, we've, we've been working alongside this yeah, year. Nice. We've been using uh, specialist timber merchants. We've been using staircase manufacturers. Um, and these companies are you know, really good at supporting our cause. Sometimes, there's no secret, sometimes we do get gifted products as well. And indeed, um, you know, that helps with us making content because the more content we can bring, the more different products we can bring, and hopefully that finds it more engaging. So thanks to all the power tools we're working with as well. And then no order or run through, you can add any ones yeah. I forget. So we've been working obviously alongside Milwaukee, Metabo, Hikoki, Makita, Festool, Festool, um, Smart Blades, Smart Blades um, Tracer, uh, who Gapo, else? Gapo Tape, Gapo Gapo tape. Yeah. yeah, obviously not on the tool side. Not on the tool yeah. side, but not on the tool side, but big thanks to Fix Radio for yeah. letting us buy yeah, the exactly. studio. Yeah, exactly. That's another show. one. That's another one. We are here in the Fix Radio studios. We're out on our Christmas do, and they've kindly. This is Louis, his, who founded the radio station. He's such a nice individual. Had said. I've sent him a text saying, you know, we're in London, can we borrow the studio for an hour or two? And of course, he said, yeah, absolutely, no problem. And the carpentry show, I've been doing that on a Monday at 2 p.m. I've been doing that for about 18 months, and that's been an absolute education and something I'm really grateful for. It was super daunting in the outset, thinking, mm -hmm. come and do a radio show. I don't know anything about radio. Mm -hmm. But the guys here, this is a growing business, and... They, I think they've just got everything in the right places. A, they want to serve, serve our community. They want to serve the community of builders up and down the country. It's run by Louis, who is just a nice individual, and all of his staff. He seems to pick the right kind of people to form such a really good station. So if you're not already listening to Fix Radio, it's on DAB. It's nationwide. Just look for Fix Radio. It's the builder's station, and um, I'm not just plugging it because I have a carpentry <laughs> show on it, but there's other specialist trade shows where we've got yeah, everything, isn't there? Andy yeah. Cam and Todd Glister yeah, yeah. on the on plumbing, the plumbing show. show. We've Nargy got on the electrical show, uh, yeah, Thomas Nargi, another YouTuber who is doing the electrical show. We've got Todd Von Joel and I can always... Pass, I'm sorry, oh, I don't know. To, uh, Joel Bardell. Joe Joel Bardell. Bardell and Todd Van Joel. That's always, because of the two Joels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the doing ball the paint, builders as well. painting and decorating show. Then we've obviously got the ball, ball builders. builders. Everyone knows the ball builders. They've got the breakfast show and they are absolutely entertaining. Yeah, they're killing it. To a fault. Um, and then we've also got Chris Frediani on the plastering show. Um, Paul O'Reilly. Paul O'Reilly does the drive time show and we've got Gracie in the evenings now. She's doing a fabulous job. Uh, in the evenings as well and um, so yeah there's a fairly good lineup is there anyone we've missed on the trade shows is there anyone we've missed uh pass i don't think so uh, no. I mean, you could go you, you work with some great brands obviously we've got james hardy you were doing yesterday yeah what, what can you tell us about that james What's hardy that? and i've been working alongside their vl plank now and um, this is an interesting one um because i do a lot of timber cladding and i get a lot of comments when i do the timber cladding have you tr tried cement blaze mm -hmm. cladding and those comments are coming in at the same time I'm looking at working with James Hardy because um, they offered me an opportunity to try the VL plank and uh, learn all about it and I, I just by nature I like to learn about new products and when I get the opportunity to learn about a new product like that um, yeah so that's going quite well as I say we did the how to install VL plank and that's actually number two of our last uh, 10 productions yeah. so it's doing pretty well there's a lot of hunger for people doing that sort of stuff so yeah. also what I would love to know for next year in the comments is What's the best type of content you want from us? I gather, I gather you're not interested in my personal life or what I do at the weekends, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I just want to know, is it making stuff? Is it this kind of sort of like affair, current affairs of the building trade? Mm -hmm. Is it the chippy chat? Tell us exactly what you like, and if I can work out from the comments which way to go, then obviously we'll try to steer the content to that because I appreciate there's so much content to watch on YouTube you're bombarded with so many good channels around the world yeah, that yeah. to find the time to watch our little channel as well I too, too, do totally yeah. appreciate it we've got so. some good collaborations as well in the new year yeah we have. Year, so we that, have we can't keep, keep peel for those yeah, who are not saying we can't but, um, mention them we've got some really good collabs with uh, other YouTubers and yeah. people like that and international ones as well so and that's what that's them. what they ask for a few people in the comments ask for more collabs like that after Ragbo and Brown so we listen to that and that's coming up next next year yeah it is yeah and um so yeah make sure you ask us in the comments what you think we should be doing for next year i want to do a personal thank you now first of all to ed you beat me to it i was about to a personal and, thank you to you and, and to <laughs> lloyd 
Now, obviously, these guys are with me all the time and they work super hard and they get the work done. I try not to breathe down their necks too much. I'm trying to step back and let them do a little bit more on their own. Secondly, thanks to the clients, obviously. Thirdly, thanks to my suppliers who um, give us a great service and make sure our material arrives on time. And it's not just because we're in YouTube. Half of them don't even know that. They just supply Man. our goods. And also everyone else who helps me behind the scenes. So I've got Adrian who is the hinge jig man who, who helps me with the hinge jigs. You know, he actually sort of produces them with me and he does all of the laser work. He's an absolute genius. So thank you, Adrian, for everything this year. Vince as well. Vince is a carpenter from Beauty in Cornwall who reached out to me when I first started and said, do you want a hand with shipping? Mm. I said, what do you know about shipping? He says, oh, well, I've got a <laughs> tiny little shipping business that my and my wife run on the side. He's a carpenter. Mm. And I said, Vince, I need a hand with this. And so it was just one of those chats with someone. Happy and accidents. he's been looking after it ever since. He does a fantastic job for me, deals with all the aggravation. Um, and he's totally reliable. He's always on the ball, always answers the WhatsApp and everything mm. else. Any time of day or night, you don't have to do that, by the way. Um, so <laughs> thanks to the team down in Cornwall there. And... Obviously, my accountant. <laughs> Thanks to my accountant. I know you probably won't be watching this because this isn't probably of interest to you. But if anyone who anyone knows him, then you can tell him. Um, yeah, and everyone else who has helped us this year. Yeah, thank, I'd like to thank you again. Yeah, thank you so much for all you've done. Thank you, Lordy, for joining the team. Thank you, mate. Welcome, pleasure. welcome on, and uh, oh, thank everyone who bought a hinge. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Thank every single, routers. yeah, every single thank customer, so and thanks to the manufacturer of the router cutters because they have been absolutely amazing in developing our little router cutter exactly to the specification I wanted. I looked at so many manufacturers around the world and finally found the one that had the quality of steel that I wanted and that had the service level that I needed as mm. well. And it is, even though they are far away, they are just the most amazing, reliable people. You probably won't be watching this either, but thank you <laughs> very much. Um, and is there anyone else I have forgotten to thank? Okay, so we've got Adrian, we've got Vince and his team, obviously you guys. Thank you to our partners for supporting us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything we do. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and the, you, the audience, are yeah. the most important. So yeah, massively. Thank you to you lot of the audience. And if you are listening to the Fix family as well, make sure you tune in and that's, keep tuned. That's enough thank yous. Let's go and have a beer. It's our Christmas <laughs> day. Yeah, exactly. Come on. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to have a beer tonight and wear some lederhosen. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. And there's Cheers. a lot more coming for us in the new year. So make sure you stick around, subscribe, and follow all our social media. Thanks, guys. See you in 2023. Let's go and hope. Let's hope we've got it on camera. <laughs> hope you've got the audio.